Hey everyone, this is part two of last week's, which was on Second Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verse 14, which states, If my people, who are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will then hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Um, we are going to get into a God of order. But then uh, just a quick recap of last week, uh, we've learned that we are the people called by his name, those who uh, believe in Jesus and in his resurrection and our sins being forgiven. So the Christians are Christ's followers. And <laughs> uh, so if my people who are called by my name, so we are called by name, will humble themselves. We learned what that looks like. And... Uh, and humbling ourselves, taking a lowly position, uh, being God-centered and not self-centered, and uh, pray and seek my face. And uh, we can, uh, seeking his face of God, that's uh, the thing that molds us because we're looking at perfection. And then when you're standing in the presence of perfection, uh, you want to be more like that. Like when I was... Uh, I used to be really big into baseball. I still am, kind of. But uh, I used to watch uh, Ken Griffey Jr., who had one of the perfect swings. And I would mimic his swing and, and watch it in slow motion. And and by doing that, I was hitting the ball better because of his uh, the uh, what how he swung. And just the more I was watching, the more uh, I would go and do all of his little things before he went up to bat. And, and I just... Uh, my swing became better by mimicking him and just because of how uh, pristine it was. And um, that's uh, when you're in the presence of God, you just you see something, you see how how effortless and how uh, uh, holy he is that should mold us and then turn from our wicked ways. That's a heart thing. So like if you're in the presence of God and he uh, you see perfection, and you still do the thing that you now know in your mind is not uh, of God, but you choose to do it. That's just a rebellious heart. So it's not a, a condemning type of thing. It's a conviction type thing. And uh, it's, a, it's a state of where your heart is. But then we get to our next part. Then I would hear from heaven. So Jesus sits at the right hand of God. And so he's our high priest. And he petitions for us our prayers. But to get up there, uh, he is a God of order. And so if you are in each, each believer has uh, an incorruptible spirit that is put in you right when you are born again. You're born again of a new spirit. And so and that spirit is perfect. And now uh, it's fighting for um, territory over your soul where your flesh and the things of the world are fighting over this one territory and uh, in your soul. So you have these, this battle going on and the goal is for um, the spirit to overtake the soul and then start uh, manifesting in our body and in what we do and how we interact in the world to give it more territory. And so... I heard a, I remember someone said something about like, um, it's who you, what you feed is what wins. So like if you're feeding your flesh or your body or your, your, your old self, your old, uh, um, habits and everything that are not based in life, not based in God, then they will gra get more ground in your soul. If you feed things of the spirit, you hunger and thirst for righteousness then things of God will get take begin to take up more territory in your soul. And uh, this incorruptible spirit, it's in communication with the Holy Spirit, it's in communication with Jesus and, and God and the Trinity. And so um, as it's communicating with uh, the spirit, it's saying things that uh, <laughs> it might not be praying the same prayers as you. So let's say that you're praying for God to do something. Uh, the spirit will focus in on the things that aren't lining up with God. And so you'll be praying for something you want, but the spirit is praying for what you need inside of you. So God will um, look at what's 
taking you out of line with him. And that's what's going to be addressed. Uh, but God can still do like he's 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 not a, a robot. He can still uh, work around and he can answer what you want, even if you're not in order. But if you want to, uh, our goal is to be praying according to his will. Uh, and we have a, a, a verse in First John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions we ask of him. And so our goal should be to be saying prayers or asking things of God that are in line with his will. Because then if they're in line with his will, he will then hear from heaven, which just goes back to our verse, and uh, forgive our sins and heal our land because we are lined up with him. He's a God of order. So if you're out of order, uh, when we pray, they won't match up to uh, his will, which is what our spirit prays. Our spirit prays according to his will. And his will is for us to reflect him. And so there's a, 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 a mis a focus, I think, in a lot of churches. And I'm not going to say all churches, because uh, but in a lot of churches, uh, we push just salvation, salvation over everything. And that's good. And that is one of the uh, directives that God wants. He wants everybody to um, enter into the sheepfold, enter into his kingdom. Uh, but what he came here to do was so that uh, to have us uh, operate in how he created us to be his image bearers, to reflect and operate like Christ, to be like little Christ. And so he wants us to reflect him and his glory. So when people see us, they see him, that we will actually be the body of Christ and that uh, we will have authority over the lamb because he created man uh, to have authority. We got the name animals and names were perfect. And, and he did all this stuff so, uh, so that we can reflect his glory in heaven. And it was good to him. And so in the fall, we lost contact with our image bearer. And so then when Christ came, he was the perfect representation of God. And then he gave his spirit for us to um, just submit to. And to, so we can have that communion because we are now the temples and he can dwell within us. And so that's very, very important that we have that now. But still, he is not an overbearing God. He is not a God that's going to force himself upon us. So we still have free will. We still have choice. And so we have the choice to humble ourselves to the voice of God and to his will. Or we have the choice to just do whatever uh, uh, Satan might want us to do in the spiritual forces of darkness will want you to do and with churches they call it like doing according to the flesh but it's just uh whatever the the voices that are not rooted in god that are contrary to the will of god you have the choice to choose to follow those or you have the choice to choose to follow christ and so he's asking us if my people who are called by my name and so you have uh, uh, you are a believer, you have given your life over to Christ, and you are called by his name, would humble themselves. And so basically just getting in alignment with him and seeking his face so that you know his will so he can mold you into being who he created you to be, which is having authority and power over this earth and uh, to represent him on this earth. Uh, if my people would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, wicked ways is literally just a sin is uh, not lining up with God. So wicked ways is uh, not following God, not looking at God, not uh, doing things according to ourself and not according to God's will. And so anytime we go through life, which every I, I do all the time, and we lose track of God and then we... Uh, come back to God. He's happy what we came back and that we're coming to him. But the goal is for us to um, more and more not drift away from him and to rely on him more every day. And so 
um, what happened. And so we're the temple. And then Jesus cleared the temple two times when he was here on earth. And uh, it's like the, the one that comes to people's mind is when he came in. It was, we call it Palm Sunday. And he was welcome. They were saying Hosanna. And he just had like everybody was welcoming in. First thing he did was went into the temple and started cleaning the temple. Because when you welcome Jesus and you surrender to God and you give him free reign, he's going to go in to your temple, my temple, and he's going to flip tables of things that aren't his. And this is a holiness is what it is. It's things that don't line up with him. Him being the high priest uh, and holy will come in and he will clean out things that aren't aligned with what he said and what he is. And these money changers were um, setting up and in a portion of the temple that was supposed to be for, uh, I believe it's the non-Jews so they can worship the God. And so they weren't able to come in and then they were charging extra money, which was, uh, he was, they were putting up barriers to coming to God. He doesn't want any barriers to coming to him. So this hurt God's heart. So Jesus, according to God's will, he's flipping these tables. He wants to do the same thing within each one of our hearts. He wants things that aren't lined up with him, that aren't in order with him to be, uh, he'll get rid of those. Anything that's causing any um, um, conflict or any uh, that's messing with the signal of him getting through and being able to communicate with you and you being able and me being able to reflect his image. He wants to get rid of it because he wants to have a clear communication channel with us and have nothing that's in the way that alters the him being able to communicate with us. And so then when that's in order, he, he hears from heaven. He hears our voices as we cry out because we're praying according to his will because he got rid of things that aren't lined up with him, all the wickedness. We allowed him to take away. We give him free reign. We say, you dwell in us. You, there's no dark area within us. We don't want it. And so he's allowed to clean out things so that now we're praying according to his will. And then when we know his will, we know his face and we pray according to his will, then you have healing that comes because he's able to allow his kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven because his temples are cleansed and his temples are prepared and so we have to, uh, our job is to repair the gates of the temple. That's uh, things that we allow in our mind and in our heart and, and to take control of our soul. We have to um, bring those things captive before God because you can't just let anything in your mind to have influence over you. And as an example, right now, I don't know, you might be listening to this video some years from now, I don't know how this work or maybe people will just go away. I don't know. But right now there's, we're in the middle of a, this uh, George Floyd about a, over a week ago was murdered. And so there's riots going on for about the past week all over uh, the nation. And so, and then there's this term that's being shouted out from all over in the protest, the peaceful ones and the rioters and looters, which is a separate thing. Are they, they're both saying this Black Lives Matter. And um, I agree with that, Black Lives Matter, but I don't, uh, I'll, you'll never hear me say it or hashtag it or anything like that because um, I, don't, uh, I don't believe in the, the motivation behind it and why they're saying it. Um, I take it a step higher than just Black Lives Matter. I say that we are the image of God. Uh, me being a black man, we represent the tapestry of God that is in heaven. So there's uh, all these different races and all of them together is a reflection of God. And so if uh, you uh, treat uh, me or anyone that looks like me or not like a certain whatever culture you're in, like if you're Indian culture and they might treat anybody who's not Hindu or Indian a certain way, um, any, any race that treats any other race as less than is not reflecting uh, the kingdom of God. And so when we pray, let your kingdom come, let your will be done, I am a reflection of that and everybody, every other race is a reflection of that. And so when I uh, speak, it's not from a place of hopelessness, 
or trying to justify my importance or a place at the adult table, but it's from a confident hope of who I am and who God says that I am. And uh, it's and it's me expo- ex- exclaiming, uh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Um, and so it's from a place of confident hope. Uh, I'm not angry uh, about, uh, well, I am, I do have anger, but it's a, I'm given to God, it's a righteous anger, but I'm not feel, I, mean, I don't have a feeling of hopelessness because God shows me who I am and that I am created in the image of God. And that's where I come from. It's not a place of hopelessness. And so when you see these writers, you see all these people who are speaking and like saying, you need to know my position and, and we are going all this stuff, uh, speak life to them. Take the opportunity to speak life. Tell them who they are. Let them know that God loves them and they are, are citizens of heaven and that anybody who does that uh, doesn't realize like and the Black Lives Matter. Yeah, we matter, but it, we don't just uh, trying to matter. Why do we matter? Because of God. and We are a part of the kingdom of heaven. And so, um, and we are made, we're created to reflect God here on earth. And so that's my message about what's going on right now or why I don't use Black Lives Matter because I think it's limiting and it's almost like we matter. Let us sit at the table. We can sit at the adult table we can we contribute to the economy or something like that and and it we're part of the heavenly economy and so i don't i i from a heavenly standpoint i don't have to explain exclaim i matter i know i matter uh so uh you better line up and if you don't then i'll just say god please forgive them they don't know what they're doing let them see you lord how can i reflect you today and what i do how can i uphold the head of God and the glory of God so that they can see you in me and so that they can be convicted for whatever thoughts that don't line up with you because your word is like a two-edged sword and it divides the soul and spirit. And I know that if I am operating and walking according to your word and I am bearing your image, that either the thing that's wrong in them will be uh, exposed or it will convict them if they really do hunger and thirst for righteousness and they will see you and me and then they will let you do some surgery and flip some tables in their heart and because unless hearts change nothing's going to change um, so that is what we need we need healing of the land we need to speak life we need to not just come from a place of hurt, but we need to speak life to people and let them know who they are when they cry out, speak life to them. Thank you.